Chapel at Windsor. Uh, at the moment, let's head over to our correspondent who's uh, in Windsor now, Katie Spencer. And uh, Katie, we're timing this just about right. Yeah, look, a very significant day for the King. Uh, we know uh, the public appearances that he's been able to make have been very far and few between, really. It's rare that we have seen him out and about, able to walk around. The, the only uh, real sort of images that we've been given him, of him uh, in the, the last month or so have been still photographs, really, of him, because he has, um, we're told, uh, been carrying on with royal duties, but in a more controlled fashion. We know he's still been answering the, the red box of uh, du royal duties. He's been carrying on with those quietly behind closed doors. Um, but he's also been uh, privately at Buckingham Palace taking audiences with various uh, ambassadors. But he hasn't actually been out and about. Uh, and well, I'm able just going to jump in, Katie, because we can, see, we can see the King and Queen now arriving at St George's Chapel, their vehicle pulling up with the royal standard aboard. And we can just see the King there through the windows of the vehicle and the Queen saying their hellos as they are about to go inside. He looks in good health. There he is waving to the crowds. And clearly a man we know who has an incredible work ethic. He may have been out of view for a few weeks, but still working hard, still carrying out his royal engagements, albeit behind closed doors. And there he is alongside his wife, the Queen, heading into St. George's Chapel for today's Easter Sunday service. And many people, Katie, will be Pleased to see the King in person since that diagnosis, the first official engagement for him in public as he heads into the chapel there. Yeah. This may be a very brief appearance, but what you have to understand as well, it's incredibly cold here in Windsor today, so we weren't perhaps expecting him to hang around for too long. It is the act of him actually um, coming out and being able to be seen walking about in public, I think, is the, the real important thing here. Um, and it has meant so much to so many people. There's so many people just gathered outside here who can't even um, sort of catch a glimpse of, of King Charles going in there, but they have wanted um, to come out and just show their support, really. Certainly, Katie, thanks very much uh, indeed. The King has ever impeccably dressed as well, looking uh, very smart indeed as he headed into, uh, into the church, uh, the chapel, I should say. Um, but uh, his family ahead of him as well, obviously notable by her absence, the Princess of Wales, Catherine, who, as we know, is dealing with her own cancer diagnosis, her and her husband, Prince William, and the children not St George's Chapel today. Uh, let's bring in royal historian and author Professor Anna Whitelock, who joins me on the line now. Anna, thanks so much for joining us on this Easter Sunday. We've just got a glimpse of the King. What do you make of it? Good morning. Yeah, it was uh, a brief appearance, but I think a very significant one. Uh, to steady the ship, as it were, it's been a turbulent few weeks for the royal family, for the monarchy, with, of course, the king's diagnosis uh, with cancer and then more recently that of the Princess of Wales. So this, I think, was very much designed to, to show that things are moving in the right direction. It's not a return to normality and the palace have been keen to stress that this isn't uh, the start of a full resumption of public duties. But it is a sign that the king is, uh, is well, is improving. Um, and I think it's supposed to signal uh, that there is a sense of normality and normality that will return. And this will hopefully be beginning in time of more regular public appearances by the King. It's, a, it's also notable, of course, that to see the King and the Queen together in public. Over the last few weeks, the Queen has been doing a whole range of duties, um, really stepping up and stepping out as head of the royal family on behalf of her husband, the King, and of course, stepping up uh, at a time when the Prince and Princess of Wales are themselves uh, struggling with their own health uh, diagnosis, the, uh, the Princess of Wales is. So nice to see them together um, and a sign, hopefully, uh, for the royal family of a more optimistic um, spring into summer. As I said there, Anna, the King has an incredible work ethic. I think if I get it right, he tends to work from eight in the morning till midday, takes a breather for lunch. If he's up in Scotland, he'll go for a walk with the Queen and then works again from four till finish. And he does that every day. He gives his staff the day off at Christmas, even though he continues 
writing his letters and his notes and, and everything else. And so to see him do this is not a surprise in a huge way because he sees it very much as part of his duty. Absolutely. It is duty. It's about him as monarch and, of course, also head of the family. And also, of course, acknowledging the old age adage of the late Queen, you have to be seen to be believed. Um, and it's important for him to be seen on this Easter Sunday as head of the Church of England, as the monarch, and of course, as head of a family that's having its own health struggles at the moment. So for all of those reasons, this was a really important and deliberately significant appearance. And he's not the only 75 year old who is dealing with cancer. Uh, around the country. And just to echo the words of his daughter-in-law, they're keen to show that they're not alone, that other people are having to deal with this and get on with their lives and the royals are no different. I think that's absolutely right. My own father's uh, dealing with cancer at the moment and I think that's exactly uh, the spirit really. You just get on with it and people are living with cancer, living through cancer and in emerging well from a cancer diagnosis. And I think also uh, this appearance is signalling that. Um, this is very much about keeping calm and carrying on, as was the expression that was so often identified with the late Queen. And it is an important message. Cancer is going to uh, strike one in two of us across our lifetime. Um, and in a way that the fact that the royal family have now struggled with, with cancer just shows they're like the rest of us in this, if nothing else. And so, yes, I think it's an important sign of hope and optimism, both for uh, King Charles himself, but also um, for cancer sufferers uh, across the country. Well, sorry to hear about your dad. I hope his treatment is, uh, is going well, of course. Uh, just a final word on just how important then the Queen has become here. There was a time when we weren't even sure if Camilla would be called the Queen if she married uh, Prince Charles, then became Queen Consort. That was bestowed on her by uh, Queen Elizabeth II, of course, before she died. And now she is the Queen, and never more important to the royal family than now, picking up all those duties that her husband can't do, uh, neither can William and Catherine. So Camilla, vitally important to them at the moment. Absolutely. I mean, who would have thought a few years ago, and even at the time of the coronation, how important Camilla would be. And she has been the, the visible embodiment of the monarchy, of the crown, representing uh, her husband, the king. So really quite a remarkable uh, rise uh, and to prominence and significance and has become, uh, in the last few weeks, the real linchpin of, of the monarchy. And clearly is there stepping up, um, supporting her um her, her son-in-law, um, the, uh, sorry, her yeah, stepson, um, the Prince of Wales, who obviously has had his own struggles to support um, his wife, the Princess of Wales. So, yeah, who would have thought? But Camilla has really been keeping the show on the road and, you know, crisscrossing the country, not just doing a few appearances, but really, really prominent. And, of course, most recently on Monday, Thursday, uh, with the uh, Monday service, which, yes, the king delivered a video message, but it was Camilla who gave out the Monday money, you know, a really incredibly important uh, and historic function of a monarch. Actually, just before we, we finish now, we're obviously now in British summertime. Is the next sort of major set piece going to be the monarch's official birthday? Is the king carrying on that tradition that, that the queen had as well of having official birthday in the summer? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, obviously there'll be a great deal of interest about whether uh, when King Charles will be there um, and, of course, other members of the royal family. There was talk also of a planned royal tour, I believe, to, to Australia later in the year. So, you know, very much the mood music from the palace is things will get better. They are moving through this. The King Charles will complete his treatment and clearly is expecting to uh, resume his public duties. So it's definitely one to watch, but this is deliberately designed to signal that there is a sense of normality returning and that the King will resume public duties. And as you say, he's been very busy behind the scenes, but you have to be seen to be believed. And I think that's really what uh, motivated on this Easter Sunday as head of the Church of England, Charles stepping out today. Well, glad to see you too as well, Anna, joining us from Cambridge there. That's uh, Royal Historian and author, Professor Anna Whitelock.